That's Yes from the live album Topographic Drama, uh, live across America. It is, of course, Roundabout. And I'm joined now by Billy Sherwood, who not only plays on the thing, he produced the thing as well. How easy is it for you producing something you've played on? Uh, are we sure it says produced by me on the back? Because <laughs> I know I mixed it. Well, I thought you produced it as well. Well, we, we, we all produced it in a sense that, you know, we, we all played it and there was really, okay. you know, the arrangements have been there for forever, obviously. So I didn't so much produce it as, as kind of just select the best stuff and mix it, really. But uh, you know, I'm, I was happy to do that too. Okay, well, uh, you mixed it. Now, uh, this album is a great live album. I've had it for a few weeks now, and I haven't stopped playing it yet, which is always a good sign. And I love the fact that you've captured drama, and I love the fact that you've got the, the two parts, the two important parts from Topographic Oceans. Yeah. I've got to ask you, because people have asked me, is it from one performance or is it a composite? No, um, basically we recorded the entire tour and, uh, you know, the idea was to start out with grab a show and, and mix that show. But I had all the files and being a sort of perfectionist as I am, I went through and listened to a bunch of the shows and I started selecting the magical takes of each song that were performed that night you know it's a live performance so some nights this song's really smoking this one's a little bit got issues or whatnot and um so i i selected the best of the best which is where the title came from yeah i suggested rather than from here or from this location mm. call it live across america because that's what it really is is a selection of stuff that we did all across america how did you feel the tour went i mean from my point of view and I, I saw the dates of course in america and on the cruise i thought you really knocked it out the park i'll tell you it was one of the most exciting yes tours i've been involved with the production was a phenomenal i mean to have the tales record come to life behind you as you're playing it of course i'm sort of looking forward most of the time but there were a lot of times communicating with the drum set that i would start looking at the production behind us and it was the production was phenomenal and the playing from everybody was top notch and just the vibe on the whole tour was really fun and happy and, and joyful and you know, we were just playing at the top of our game and, and I think it's reflected in the recordings. You've been in the band playing bass in the band for over two years now and we all know how it came about and I think you you took on the role with such grace and of course it, it, it always helps when the person that you're coming in to replace approves of you and wants you to do it but how do you feel looking Looking back over the two years, I mean, it must have been a real learning curve for you, possibly a bigger curve than you might have thought. Well, it's weird because on one hand, it felt completely natural and familiar because I'd been in and out of Yes several times. So it was like going to your summer home and mm -hmm. just uh, re-familiarizing yourself with the kitchen a little bit. But the bigger part was, you know, the thought crossing my mind as I'm playing this stuff of what I'm doing and who I replaced and the emotional context involved and all that that we know and, and just how special the whole thing is and, and what an amazing thing it really is. So there were a lot of emotions on that tour, especially as we started playing the drama stuff, or tales rather. I love drama, but Tales is my one of my favorite records from the entire catalog and has a special sort of place in my heart. And those bass lines are phenomenal. And Ritual is the, some of the best stuff Chris did. And, and so to be able to do that was really an honor. And, and trying to replicate that to, to the best of my ability, hit those iconic moments that we all know and love from Chris, but then put my own spin on it. You know, during the bass solo, for instance, it's kind of a hybrid of what Chris did and then what I thought I should do because you know I didn't want to learn it note for note but it's, I wanted to put something in there so so along the way I tried to put my own stamp in there while painting within the lines that Chris had provided so well. Let's talk about Ritual because the, and again for me it, the band are doing the Revealing Science of God on Ritual, Nusom du Soleil. I, I always had a problem with sides two and three of Topographic. I don't know about you, I know it's your favourite album but for me I, and that was the first tour I ever saw Yes live on the Topographic 
Arctic Ocean so on. I remember telling Chris, and he's broad, we laughed when I told him, I said, you came on, dude, close to the edge, and then, no, we're going to do uh, our new album. And halfway, sort of through, went round about sort of halfway through side two, I'm thinking, when are you going to play something I know? But in, in fairness to me, I was only 15, and at 15, you kind of, come on, get to the point. So, but, I mean, it's an incredible album, as I said, but Ritual, you're right in saying, that was kind of, that was Chris's mark on the album. I know the album was put together by the whole band, but it was originally, the whole thing started with Steve and John, but Ritual was definitely Chris, and it must be difficult even knowing that you like you know Chris wanted you to go into the band and carry on and it's your favorite album ritual it's almost like climbing Everest yeah it was a big task and I spent a lot of time before I got to rehearsal uh, in my studio making charts for myself and, and you know I had already known it and had played to it you know in the early days with Logic we used to jam on sections from it and in the Circa uh, medley that we did the Chronological Yes medley we touched on Ritual but getting into the real nuts and bolts of it was deep and rewarding because it's just such a great record but there's a lot to it and um, I think you really have to know it in your heart to be able to play it. Uh, you know, there are a lot of great bass players out there who could come in and play this stuff, but if you don't know it, like really know it, it's going to be a real monumental task. Wow. <laughs> For me, I had the advantage of like uh, loving that song so much. I'd heard it so many times that when I finally came to put my fingers to where the notes were, I was already sort of knowing where things were going to go, so that made it a little easier. But uh, the fact that it was such an iconic Chris moment on stage put pressure on to get it right and I worked really hard to try to get it right every night. Ritual, new song du Soleil, originally of course as we know from Topographic Oceans and uh, from the brand new Live Yes album, Topographic Drama, Live Across America. The album features drama and also the two big tracks from Tales from Topographic Oceans. What I'm, I, again, I've been asked to ask various members, no Trevor Horn on uh, Tempest Fugit and I asked Jeff and he said I don't think there was a good enough version I know we did one in America and we did one in Oxford and we did I think the, the Albus Hall was recorded as well I mean did, do you have a version of it was, was it your uh, call well the Albert Hall wasn't recorded multi-track okay two-track and um, you know by the time I finished mixing and had all the individual files to really make a record listening to the two-track although the performance was great personally I didn't feel the audio was up to stand Okay. of what we had done and I put that back onto the band and the manager and said you know I I'm cool with putting this on here as like some sort of bonus track or whatnot but the audio is a little less than where we are now so it's up to you guys and mm. you know, I guess just didn't make the cut sonically but Trevor was phenomenal and it was it really was a great take at the Royal Albert Hall I wish we had the multi-tracks I was really sad to, to learn we didn't but uh, it, it was just one of those things hey well you know what maybe in the future I mean that's yeah. because I I, the great thing is that um, you know Trevor is still very very much involved in Yes when I spoke to him last year it was almost like he was still in the band I know he's great man and it, what was so cool was just standing on stage and because and, I'm a huge Buggles fan so yeah. for me I got to play with the Buggles that night uh, <laughs> that's how I was looking at it but um, Trevor man he came on with that that swagger and just delivered man it was awesome and I'd do that again Anytime. Well, he said to me, he said, I, you know, I had to work, uh, work myself up to. He said, I thought, okay, I'll do this. And I thought, oh, God, what have I let myself in for? He said, I, I've got to do this. I've got to nail it. And he said, I had to go. He said, I went and practiced. He said, a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's great. But I just think that's the yes way. I mean, I don't think anybody who's ever been in yes has just walked up and like said, oh, let's do it. I mean, there's always been a little bit of edginess and this has got to be right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a pressure that comes along with it because there's a, a, a long legacy of really good musicians playing it. You don't want to be the one guy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, next year, of course, is the 50th anniversary of Yes, and it, it all kicks off really with a Cruise to the Edge and some great news. Uh, I heard last week, of course, that uh, your old circuit bandmate Tony K is going to be joining you guys, which is great. Isn't that great? I was so excited. We, we had a little get together. And, uh, a couple of days ago, I saw Tony, and you know, he's just electrified. 
inspired by it all and, and just so excited to come out and do it. And I think it's really very cool. I mean, you know, he's an original member, founding member of the mm -hmm. band, and, and that's very special, obviously, for him having the 50th anniversary and stuff. But so many musicians within the band have participated and given their passion to the band that the 50th really is an umbrella for everyone, you know. But, but to have Tony out there with us as an original member is really special. Well, I've spoken to Steve Howe and I've spoken to Jeff Downs and I've spoken to Alan White and they're all saying well we're, we're actually going through the catalogue now and but we're picking out the songs that we think well that could be good do you have any favourites that you're going to be throwing into the mix and saying well how about this because I think everybody's pulled about three or four songs out and they go well what about this or there's going to be that and that I mean what are you thinking uh, of my selections sort of are the last on the totem pole for some reason because <laughs> uh, I sort of go for the more eclectic stuff I mean uh, I'd love to be playing Gates of Delirium for instance or uh, Silent Wings of Freedom would mm. be phenomenal to play, but I'm quite happy to play anything the band wants to play, and I love the whole package, all the music, but uh, if I had my personal, you know, they let me pick a couple, I would say Silent Wings of Freedom, and, and let's start getting Gates of Delirium together. On the last tour in America, it sadly was cut short, but you were playing Survival, and it's like, Wow. I mean, yeah. and Steve has there. We tried to keep that as a secret. And he said, I call people's faces when we opened with that. And it was like, dun, 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 dun. and everyone's faces were like, what? Yeah. And that's a great moment for a band. It is. And it, it was, you know, the, the first tour I've done with Yes, where the bass and what I'm playing is the opening statement. And while I had that lick down, there was still always this thought going out front, don't screw this up. No. <laughs> and there was one night that we played which was kind of funny where it wasn't the playing that got screwed up but for some reason sound check my bass rig everything's good and when I went out onto the stage to play I had no bass whatsoever so the, the, the symphony stops and it's, it's it's my turn to go and there's nothing happening there <laughs> You know why that is? That's because you've got a really weird bass set. I've seen that and I'm thinking, that's a bit weird. Know, and it's never failed. <laughs> that one night it failed and I just looked around and it felt like an eternity. I looked at the audience and I said, I'm so sorry. Finally, I just took the cable and plugged it into my speaker. No effects, no shenanigans involved and just started playing. And, you know, it was it was a very rough night for me because I'm not used to that. <laughs> nah. Well, I get, you know, these things happen. These things things happen I guess you know it wouldn't be rock and roll if it did and, and oh, yeah. you know I never felt anything though like an entire show stopping because of you and all of yes looking at you like what's going on over here <laughs> hey you know what well, maybe you are the first it's always good to be the first I think <laughs> maybe the jury's out on that <laughs> uh, well, once is enough well look the, the 50th anniversary uh, is coming up I mean, it's a real excitement uh, being generated both by the band and also the fan base as well and the cruise is going to be great um, I can't believe it's, it's the fifth one and I've done them all I've done as many as yes so it's... Uh, yeah that's crazy crazy isn't it I know it's a great tradition though because that there's so much great music on that boat and it's all like-minded people and you know I'm pretty social the last last cruise right before I got off the ship at the end Larry the promoter came up to me and said we've deemed you the mayor of the boat <laughs> so. yeah, well you were I, I think the word is sociable it's usually in fairness you Alan and Jeff sometimes <laughs> John uh, Steve sort of pops in and out but it's definitely you three like the three Three Musketeers. But that'll be the four, because Tony's, Tony's... Well, they, yes, I know, that's probably going to be... Uh, that may well be the, the, the thing that sinks the ship. Well, Cruise to the Edge coming up in February out of Tampa, and uh, it's done very well. I think we're pretty much almost sold out on that. The 50th anniversary of Yes is next year. I'm sure you're looking forward, because I think you're doing the UK first, and then you're doing America in the summer again, which will be great. And yeah. uh, the plan is, as, as Steve said, pretty much what the last tour was, only more of it because the yesterable thing meant that you had to kind of cut the set down a little bit so it's basically going to be more yes than you can shake a stick at which is good exactly. but in the meantime we have yes topographic drama live across America out we're going to go out with uh, another great yes classic and uh, one that I do know that you enjoy playing Starship Trooper Billy great to speak to you today you too John thanks so much <laughs>
You're listening to Classic Rock Radio.